questions. Well, welcome everyone to this month's Open Education Conference Community Call. Um, as always, we are very excited and honored to host these community calls. Um, I, along with Lee Miller, Lee, I don't know if you want to say a few things, say hi to everyone. Hello. <laughs> Um, we are members of the Conference's Steering Committee and we will be co-facilitating this month's uh, discussion on the conference theme, Reimagining uh, Open Education, which many of you might have already heard about it through some form of communication. Um, and again, we're really excited to kind of delve into the topic, this theme. Uh, the steering committee in particular is very interested in hearing your, your feedback about this as well as other related topics. And speaking of the steering committee, I just wanted to go ahead and show everyone uh, all of the members of the Open Education Conference Steering Committee. I also want to take the time to acknowledge the planning teams and volunteers involved in this process. All of those groups and people have been working so hard <laughs> behind the scenes on this event with so much of this rich feedback that you all have given us in the past from previous community calls and will uh, hopefully continue to give us. Uh, we're really, really grateful for this. Also, if you are on social media, please follow us uh, on a variety of different social media accounts. If you're on Twitter, uh, search for the handle HeyOpenEd, H-E-Y-O-P-E-N-E-D. Same handle on Facebook and Instagram. And if you're into the hashtags, go ahead and put that hashtag on your tweet, <laughs> the conference hashtag, which is hashtag OpenEd20. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we have planned for you on this call. So first up on the agenda, agenda, excuse me, we have some housekeeping things to take care of, specifically some updates about the conference. And then we're going to get everyone set up into Mentimeter. And for those who haven't been able to attend some of our previous open ed conference community calls, um, Mentimeter is the platform, the primary platform that we use to collect data and real time feedback from you all about the topic that we'll be discussing on the, the community call. So we'll, we'll get everyone set up there. And then we're going to delve into the topic, the theme, conference theme, reimagining open education. From there, Lee is going to give you some instructions in terms of our breakout groups. So we'll discuss that in a little more detail. And then after we discuss our conference theme in smaller groups, we will then report back as a larger group about what we discuss in those, those small groups. All right, so first, let's go ahead and get set up in Mentimeter. Um, I do recommend that you use a separate browser from the current device or browser that you're using to join this call. So if you're currently, for example, on your laptop, you might want to use your phone to get set up on Mentimeter. And there's a couple of ways that you can do that. So probably the easiest way to do that is either just to type in menti.com into your browser and then uh, type in the code that's on the screen, which is 5429749. I see that Lee here actually submitted a direct link to the Mentimeter slides that we're using for this call. Um, and so you can just, you know, click on that link and then just submit that code again. And that's 5429749. Or if you're really high tech, <laughs> you can take a picture of the QR code uh, on the screen and the browser, the link should automatically populate on your, your browser. So I'm gonna give people a few seconds just to get situated in Mentimeter. And if you do have any questions or if you're having some troubles getting set up, please go ahead and direct those questions in the chat. All right, so I think we are all set up in Mentimeter. Let's go ahead and take care of some really easy questions. So the first question is, uh, where are you joining from for this call? You can put your state name, province, or country name, or all of the above if you want to. Okay, we have Canada, Montreal, Michigan, Pensacola, Florida, I like that. Ugh, I wanna be in Florida right now. <laughs> Connecticut, Secret Bunker, I like that too. <laughs> Virginia, awesome. Arkansas, yay, Arkansas. Okay, looks like we have a pretty, at least US representative um, 
representation here, but love to see more international. All right, I think we can move on to the next question. Uh, so I don't know about you all, but the past couple of weeks for me have been extremely <laughs> stressful. Uh, I know I'm, I'm wearing it very well, um, but I wish I could take a vacation right now in the traditional sense. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot. Uh, but if you could, what is your dream vacation right now at this very moment? You can go ahead and submit your responses in Mentimeter. Mountains, ooh, yes. We have a lot of folks for the mountains. Nature, we have a couple people for in-person conference. That's, you know, that's okay. Tropical, a lot of people voting for the mountains. I would definitely agree with that. And we have a few for a staycation too. Oh, family, I like that. Space, yes. That should have been an option, Rebel. I, you know, yes, I vote for space too. <laughs> I agree, Jeff, yeah. All right, thank you so much for your responses. Um, I think at this point we're gonna go ahead and, yeah, a COVID-free planet, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, we're going to go ahead and get into some updates about the planning process with the conference and I'll go ahead and pass it over to Daniel. Excellent. Thanks so much, Jasmine. Uh, well, it's great to be with you all again. Um, so you've hopefully you have all subscribed and seen the emails coming out. So if you have, you know that the conference is November 9th through 13th. So it's going to be a five day virtual conference. I think this is an incredibly exciting opportunity. Uh, to welcome many new participants um, that probably couldn't join us uh, when we were in person in the past. Another big update here is that uh, we have, after talking with the community, after receiving all of the feedback, we have set a standard registration rate. So for this year, it is going to be 75 um, US dollars. Uh, and we made this decision after listening to the community and understanding that affordability is incredibly important um, to our, 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 our community here. Um, we will be ensuring that there are uh, discounted rates available um, and that there's a scholarship process for those who may see that cost as a barrier to their participation. But we really wanted to make sure that we were balancing not only affordability, but also uh, sustainability. Um, so ho hopefully you, you, you see that. Uh, that we are listening and we hope that, uh, you know, that $75 rate um, is amenable to all of y'all. Uh, and if it is a barrier, as we said, there are going to be discounted rates and scholarships um, available as well. So registration will open in early September uh, and there will be more details on how to get the discounts or how to get a qualify for a scholarship coming out very, very soon. Um, and I'm excited to see you all in November. So let me hand it over to Nicole um, to talk a little bit more about the call for proposals. Uh, yeah, so I just uh, especially want to give a shout out to the uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion team of volunteers has put a lot of thought into uh, how to set up a, an equitable process for the registration rate and, and make sure that you know we're thinking about the sustainability of the conference for those who have access to funding while also making sure that uh, funding isn't a barrier uh, to participation. So lots more to come on that soon and, and just want to echo what Daniel said about uh, the, the feedback we've received from the community has been extraordinarily helpful in making some very difficult decisions in terms of balancing priorities and, and, and thinking about the, the future of a conference in the process. So uh, thanks to, to all of you who've taken the time to come to these meetings every month and, and continue to do that. So, um, as uh, many of you probably know, the call for proposals is out, and I'm actually going to turn it over to fellow steering committee member Emily Reagan to talk a little bit more about that. Emily? Hi, all. 
Well, we are very happy to have gotten the call for proposals out and we've distributed it in many places and we hope you continue to help us spread the word. We're really excited to get as many applications for this conference as possible. There's synchronous and asynchronous session types, everything from 10 minute lightning talks to some longer workshop type slots. So there's something for every presenter. We have selected eight topics ranging from introduction to open ed to some more timely topics. And so I think there's a place for every open ed topic to find a home. And you have the addition to propose alternatives if our eight uh, topic areas don't capture your open education related topic. So please do share our call for proposals widely. We're really excited to get a large mix of very different and diverse proposals for the conference. And the chat um, has our link to the call for proposals. So we do have a Mentimeter question related to the CFP. Do you personally plan to submit a proposal for our conference? And um, noting that the deadline for the CFP is September 1st. Oh, fantastic. We have a whole um, bunch of people mm -hmm. planning to submit on this call. I'm super excited to see this. And, you know, we have a, a significant cohort who aren't planning to submit too. They seem to be gaining. <laughs> um, and fantastic, we already have two people on this call who have submitted. Great, so it's ended up looking a little more close to 50-50 for those of you planning to submit and uh, not planning to submit. And we welcome you all at the conference and we really welcome those of you who are submitting to um, get those submissions in by September 1st. So next question, you can enter your feedback, type it into Mentimeter. What is that feedback that you have for us around the CFP? We know everything wasn't perfect this year. <laughs> no one uh, foresaw COVID-19 when we started this process. And we knew building from a lot of community input would be a little slower and we're building this up from scratch. So we recognize that the timeline is not optimal. I'm a faculty member and I just started the semester. <laughs> so I, I realize this is a crazy time of year. Um, but recognizing everything, what feedback do you have for us, which will inform our process for future years? Yeah, bit of a quick turnaround. Um, yeah, too quick turnaround time. Reposting is very important. And then some positive feedback. Um, thanks. Everything has been clear and transparent. Someone is new to open ed and has no idea what to expect. Um, someone reports that it went smoothly for them. And someone, this is the first they've seen of the call for proposals. So we apologize that you haven't seen it in the places that we've sent it out. And we're glad we're getting the word out now. And this is really a team effort to, sp to spread the word. Um, it is a busy time of year to prepare a proposal. Um, some people need permission to submit and not sure if they can get that in time. Some appreciation. Yeah, okay, so many people commenting on the short time to submit and I, I do not disagree with you. This is a tight turnaround. Yeah. More time helps coordinate collaborative presentations, but some understanding as to why our timeline was short this year. I'm glad that um, some people are optimistic and positive that they can make it work. And I think that's a good attitude for all of us. Like we're gonna make this work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Emily, if I may just add one thing, uh, the mm -hmm. call for proposal form is intentionally short. It uh, abstracts are a maximum of, of 250 characters or, or around 300 words. So uh, really, we, we didn't, uh, we considered the short turnaround when constructing the form. So, so it's not quite as much work maybe as it, it may seem, uh, but certainly here, certainly here. Yes, and um, someone pointed out you can save, so you can prepare part of your proposal and save and then come back to it, you know, another day. There's also um, a nice tool in Google Docs, which has all of the questions that you will have to fill out. So if you would like to prepare things in Google Docs ahead of time and then get all that um, uploading done at one time, that's another possibility.
and we just posted some tips and resources, including that document yesterday. I'm putting the link in the chat. I see a question. I wonder what was trying to be the equivalent for poster sessions. And certainly the 10 minute lightning talks, which are asynchronous, are I think an important avenue for people to come share out in a way that might be similar to a poster presentation. Yeah, August is a nightmare. I really do hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and and especially this August of all Augusts, right? Because we have such um, a different teaching environment, you know, online or are we online or are we not online, depending on the institution we're at. This is a particularly tough August. Oh, and then showcase gallery as well. Nicole, would you like to speak to the showcase gallery? Yes, that, that's multi-format asynchronous content. So you can create a poster. That's one of the options for that. Uh, but it really any any format type, be creative. And then I hear that in the chat here. March felt like it was five years long and August has felt like it's only been a week. Like I am <laughs> I have had the same experience of time. I, I yes, and other people have felt that too. And then a question, URL for Google template. I'm sure we can get that in the chat here over the next few minutes. Yeah, thank you for fantastic. Thank you. Well, good. Thank you all for your input. All right, so let's go ahead and get into today's main topic, which of course is the conference theme, reimagining open education. Uh, so, so when the steering committee finally decided on uh, what the theme would be for the conference, which again, was really, really in, heavily influenced by uh, previous community calls, I was very pleased to hear that this is what we landed on. And I was also pleased to hear, at least within you know, my specific network, that the response was pretty uh, positive. Um, the, the steering committee agreed that this is a pretty solid theme for a conference because it's, it's so timely. And honestly, it really is a call to action to address so many of our most pressing issues in education that you know, simply can, cannot wait. It's about holding ourselves accountable to be malleable and, and to truly serve the communities that we claim to serve and embody a community driven approach, one that addresses social justice, uh, structural inequities, inclusion, and, and so much more, rather than taking more of a, a savior approach. And open education more specifically has been presented as a solution to some educational problems like accessibility and, and textbook costs. And, uh, you know, we've ac accomplished a great deal in that area. But I'm wondering, you know, now more than ever is the time for for critical reflection and uh, coming up with tangible actions that we can do to actively engage in our educational um, uh, ecosystems. And so again, this means addressing inequities that we see amplified at such a jarring level because of COVID-19, because of structural racism. And, and since education as a whole is, is in a way being forced to redefine its purpose because of these external situations, um, I think this is a really um, interesting opportunity for open education to reposition and to try to answer some really tough questions and problems. But you know, we're not only looking you know, outward or externally, we have to look inward as well, more specifically at the conference uh, experience. Um, some of us on this call, hopefully this is gonna be your first <laughs> open ed. I really hope I do see many of you there um, in November. And for some of us, we have attended uh, several open ed conferences. And we've, we've listened to the community's feedback about um, moving away from presenting this conference as the premier conference to share ideas about open education, where, you know, you kind of see the same faces and voices being elevated. And what we found through listening is that people want this conference to be an event where we can truly learn and get our hands dirty, if you will, and apply this to their respective situations. 
And so our hope is that reimagining the conference experience can point more directly to learning and how we can successfully achieve certain learning outcomes for attendees. So with that, and this whole introduction of the conference theme in mind, let's actually jump back to Mentimeter and answer a few uh, questions related to this topic. So the first uh, question reads, what learning outcomes do you hope to get out of the Open Education Conference this year? And Lee, I'm actually going to call on you to further contextualize this just to clarify the question a bit for our, our audience. Sure. So um, in terms of the proposal process, um, this is going to focus on, um, you know, what are some of the learning outcomes that are going to be presented within the, what you're proposing? Um, that's going to be some of the focus. So in terms of just to make sure everybody's on the same page of what we're asking for as a learning outcome, it's looking at um, it's a statement that's going to describe the essential aspects of what learners can actually take away from what it is that you're going to be presenting. Um, so it's not just necessarily just a shareable or um, something that you're wanting to highlight what you've done. There's actually um, some actual points that they're going to be able to take away and then maybe um, either apply or increase their knowledge in some way, shape, or form. So that's what we're kind of looking for in terms of, of the open outcomes or the learning outcomes. All right, so we have some um, responses here, Mentimeter. So I am reading, um, someone said new OER projects happening. I always like to hear about what people are working on and how that's applicable to my local context. Um, networking, of course ways to increase open pedagogy i'm assuming in the program assessing the impact of oer uh, understanding best practices and working towards open education for the first time i really like that i feel like there needs to be some type of like crash course into <laughs> open education and building the infrastructure to make sure that it's sustainable I really like that. How to ensure that the OERs I want to use are high quality and written with a standard in mind. Excellent. Planning inclusion into OER practices. I have talked about this a great deal, whether that's a grant program or some other program to help support open education efforts. How do we build inclusion or with inclusion in mind? I'm really glad someone said that. International collaborations at promote or at promoting equity. Yes, love that. And more voices from the global south decolonizing the curriculum. Yeah. Sustainability. Good. Students. The reason why I'm in my job, my students. <laughs> The role of students in open ed, absolutely. And we, we really hope to have several student voices at the conference this year. Excellent. All right, I think we are ready to move on to our next question. Thank you so much for those responses. So the next question reads, what do you think the long-term goals of the Open Education Conference should be? So just really take a few seconds to think about this before you respond. Long-term goals of the conference. And this can include a post-conference experience as well. All right, so we're getting a few responses. I'm seeing a lot of community, the word community be being put here in Mentimeter, that's excellent. I like resilient communities. I really like that language. Getting a striving, sustaining, inclusive OER community all over the universe, not just the world, the universe. Yes. <laughs> Establishing an open forum for sharing. Absolutely. Mentors. I think we discussed this a little bit in our last community call. Again, that kind of goes back to my joke, but not so much of a joke about a crash course and in, in a course into OER and really um, having those initial touch points with people who are um, new to this community. Mentors, yes, mentorship community. 
policy language help guidelines, diversity, yes. Show the textbook publishers that we are in this for the long game and we are going to keep developing open learning solutions. Oh, they, they know. <laughs> I'm sure they're well aware. <laughs> but yes, still, you know, keeping that on their radar. I agree. To ensure the integrity of open source materials. Yes. A sustainable annual gathering. And again, I'm seeing some of the same themes about, you know, welcoming new people, having our infrastructure, oh, it just went away, but basically making sure that you're thinking more intentionally about how do we welcome um, new people um, or new voices into this community. And going away from that rock star community or rock star um, uh, critique that we've been hearing a lot from the community. Excellent. This is great feedback, everyone. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Lee, who's going to give us further instructions about uh, the next part of our call. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I'm going to make one comment. It's coming up right now. Strong ties for FOSS. Just to make sure everybody's aware what that is, if, if you don't know. Um, it's free and open source software. So that's what that acronym means to put everybody on the same page. So we're going to jump to um, look at breakout rooms. And this is our question. I'm actually going to um, submit that question in chat so that everybody has it when we do go out to breakout rooms. Um, we're going to break out for 10 minutes so that we make sure we have time to come back and be able to discuss everything that we want to, to look at. Um, within that, when you do get into your breakout room, please designate right off the bat a speaker so that you can have somebody highlight um, two points of what you guys wanted to talk about for, um, for this question. Um, even though that Mentimeter will be running, we will have that option. So even if your idea is not one of the highlighted ones from your group, please put all of those ideas included in the highlighted ones in Mentimeter so we can document all of that information. Okay, so we'll go ahead and go to some, of, just a few of the, the kind of ground rules, if you will. Um, so the first one here, um, if you tend to speak up a lot, make space for, for others. So it's one of those things where sometimes we'll just start talking just to kind of clarify our own idea for ourselves. So kind of just keep it respectful of that time since we do have a small window and recognize um, the space that you are taking up as well as the time. So feel free to pause, clarify what you wanna say and then by all means speak up and, and put your two cents in on the conversation. Uh, the second one, listen actively. Uh, so with this one, you know, silence is okay to, to try to put your ideas together and then comment back. And that kind of leads into the next one of, of take time to repeat back and clarify language. And again, we, we kind of provide two different options. Um, so the, the goal is to make an effort towards understanding. And we can do that by either asking questions or we can do that um, by, by repeating back what we heard to clarify what they were saying. Uh, and then last but not least, you know, help others make, make them look brilliant. Um, if you if you like what somebody else is saying, support their their thoughts and ideas, and provide that um, that community feeling of um, support and trust and all those type of things, collaboration, and it's also going to empower others who may not necessarily be usually the speaker, um, and empower them to feel like they can speak up more. Uh, so those are just some of the highlights. Um, as we do go into breakout rooms, and Nicole's going to break us out here in just a minute. We will have a one minute notice when it gets close to that 10 minute mark. So note that and whenever that happens, please make sure that you just wrap up whatever thoughts that you have. And if you have time, highlight which two that you want the speaker to note for your group specifically. Um, and then we'll come back to the group. We'll have Mentimeter running so that everybody can kind of highlight their thoughts while they're fresh in their minds. And then we'll go ahead and kind of go around uh, to the breakout rooms and get those highlighted and, and start our discussion from there. Okay, so I'll turn it over to Nicole to go ahead and, and break us out.
<laughs> All right. Uh, this has been a shifting inexact science. So apologies if you end up somewhere you did not expect to be. Uh, we're going to be in groups of around uh, five or six. And uh, when I click breakout, you're going to head into your rooms and uh, we will, um, there will be a, a steering committee member, a member of the, the conference team in that room uh, to re convene the conversation and move us forward from there. All right, I'm going to uh, open them up right now. All right, we're going to wait maybe just a few more seconds for people to trickle back in. But in the meantime, you can go ahead and submit your response to this question. What does reimagining open education mean to you? I'm glad to see we're already getting some responses. Absolutely. Oh, and I like it. I get to type. I don't have to talk. Okay, so we're getting people filtered back in. Student success. Oh, hey, Jasmine. We, I'm not sure we talked about this, but we should do a group photo. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> Let's do that when everybody comes back, since people probably may need to drop off the call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and Does just everybody have to go like, put their arms out? <laughs> Yeah. We'll, we'll let you direct that. <laughs> um, yeah, we should just give people a chance to turn off their camera if they want to. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Decision making, those voices are reliable. Mm -hmm. Global perspectives, gatekeepers, financial barriers. Yeah, um, one person put, I'm new here. I'm still at reimagining education. Absolutely. And that, mm. and that is fine. Because again, open education doesn't just exist in its own little silo or vacuum, you know. Um. Mm -hmm. Well, the nice thing is, is this, I mean, it lifts any ceiling that we could imagine. I mean, right. it, 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 it takes that top off so we can... Absolutely. Right. Everyone should be back. K 12, um, PK through 12, not just higher education. I spent on in a lot of conversations. Feel free, um, if you're just uh, returning to the main room, feel free to go ahead and start putting your ideas in. Um, we're gonna just take just a few minutes and let people um, start putting those in Mentimeter. Uh, and then we'll start going around and seeing what some of the highlights were for the groups. Um, so Stephen has, okay, Nicole already answered the question. Okay, re great. Remove barriers and bound, uh, boundaries of standard practice. How do we make keep education inclusive and equitable? I like the keep part. <clears throat> and that's, I think, a, a reflection with all the sustainability aspects. It's not just a financial sustainability. It's a Cultural and Cultural social sustainability. Progress, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we'll take one more minute. Um, still let people um, put, put comments in. Even while we're talking and, and doing highlights around people, uh, pl please feel free to keep putting stuff in Mentimeter. We'd like to document all of your ideas. Um, and if you're not putting your, your highlights in, please put your highlights in as well. Um, they don't still have to be verbally indicated here too. Um, we'll just wait till the, uh, I have almost 1249, we'll wait till 1250 and then we'll start going around groups. There's one that popped up here, I'll let it come back up. There's two themes indicated. Um, students getting more involved and engaged both at the classroom level with annotation and engagement in the text and as student leaders either on campus or in community including being strong vocal advocates for OER to, um, to faculty and probably etc. Mm -hmm. um, 
under the broad umbrella of innovation, all about the innovation. Uh, reimagine how faculty, students, libraries work together, create more awareness, customize and localize open education, changing institutional, uh, colonial and commercial interests with openness. Okay, so group summary. Thank you. All right, I know we only have about 10 more minutes um, to go. So, and, and I see here, Emily said, could group four go early because people have meetings at the top yep. of the, the next okay. hour. So if um, the speaker from group four would like to go, give uh, us a brief recap. Oh, I'm so sorry, go ahead. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Rachel Lee. Um, I'm actually a recent graduate from the University of New Hampshire. Um, and I'm relatively new to the OER space. I've been working with a company called Ecotext um, and our mission is to create opportunity through affordability. Um, so our two main um, takeaways from our small conversation there um, was to one for the, um, the conference in November, possibly creating some sort of like reflection room for people who um, are new to the space, as well as for people who have had um, some years in this space. Um, so for someone like me, I would really just love to listen and hear um, about past experiences so we know um, what has been done good and you know what are things that we can improve on. And um, our second point was that um, for reimagining open education, um, we weren't necessarily saying, we weren't sure if reimagining was um, the right word because mm. um, there has been um, so much good done and we need to continue and empower each other in this space, but we also need to recognize and, crit and critique um, you know, and make improvements within this space as well. Um, so that's a brief overview um, of, what, of what Group 4 talked about. Wonderful, thank you. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and jump back up to the top and just start from one. So um, Daniel and Haley, that's, that was your group. Who's your speaker for Group 1? Okay, uh, in our group, uh, 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 speaker was me. So I will just briefly uh, uh, mention the the keywords uh, that uh, you know, like we could like from our uh, discussion, and those were affordability, diversity, accessibility, uh, and customizing uh, local uh, local localizing open education. So these were the keywords, and we discussed uh, around these points. So uh, uh, we mentioned, you know, like uh, the discussion was that we are stuck uh, more in the affordability part of it. And uh, we are thinking of open education more from the financial part. Uh, although we can think about all the different factors uh, that we can think or uh, reimagine re open education from. So this was the, the point that we discussed. And the second uh, point was that uh, making a space for open education before 2022, be putting a timeline to it so we can know that when can the open education become a norm. Uh, so that was the main point that uh, uh, we discussed. And uh, yeah, so these are the main points that we discussed in our group. Wonderful, thank you, Daniel. All right, I'm glad we're getting all this feedback. Thank you so much. Um, so we're gonna go to the second group, which is Winnie's group. Uh, who is the speaker for group two? If not, Winnie, do you no. want to give us oh, your run Susan? Oh, got great. it. Thank you. My bad. Um, so I'm at a community college and have worked on different OER projects for adult ed, but we had two mm. kind of themes in, in all our contributions. The first was getting students more involved and engaged, both at the kind of classroom level with annotation, engagement in the text, making it more culturally reflective, but also as students being the leaders, either on campus, like being the advocate for OER to faculty administration and pushing change that way, um, and in the community as well. Um, and then our second theme was kind of a broad like the credibility and rethinking what truly open education is. Like as things are online, people are, we need credibility for where's the book, where's the classroom, are we really learning? And I think we can have more widely open, um, Ryan brought up reimagining the benefits more than cost, but more like getting people, even getting things like the George Floyd and racially motivated incidences, getting 
the community more involved in real open learning um, and being mindful about how our data is used. <laughs> That's a really great point, Susan. I, I think for so long, we've been so comfortable, like literally, like the, the classroom has contained this information, both physically and, and just in so many other sense. And so now that we're in remote learning or open it or not open education, online education, whatever you want to call it, because I know those are two different things, it's kind of forced education as a whole to think more about open practices, whether they, they want to or not. So that's a really good point. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Um, we're actually going to jump because um, somebody has to jump off. So we're going to jump to group 10. Um, Regina, you want to have your group uh, present? Yeah. So um, most of what is already here in Mentimeter, we've, we've talked, so I'm not going to repeat it. Um, K-12 partnership is really important um, discussion in our group, but uh, there's one that I'd like to highlight. Um, one of our members said, um, I hope we can reimagine um, some new models for, not, for collaborative um, knowledge creation beyond what is uh, being done right now. Certainly, you know, beyond the publisher model. So how do we ensure that um, there's more collaboration, not just across um, the same institution, but you know, inter-institution across many uh, roles and even internationally, that one is not really happening right now, especially for materials that are meant to replace the traditional um, course learning materials. So I hope we can do that. Thank you, Regina. And we are starting to, to get, so I understand if people have to drop off, um, we're going to jump to, um, to group five, the presenter has to jump off for, for Amy's group. So um, Judy, do you wanna? Yeah, sure. Um, so we talked about um, the necessity of changing the paradigm um, from OER as a niche effort to openness as the dominant paradigm. And that would include not only instruction, but research and scholarship so that we understand that openness is the way that we communicate in the future. And then as part of that is the importance of advocacy, like how to, like the how to make this happen is reaching beyond the closed community, as we've been talking a lot today, to include um, a much broader uh, range of people. And then also the importance of um, embedding or integrating OER in the shift to online. So making it understood that it is both essential and beneficial to have um, open resources, as others have brought up, um, a, a part of the, this, uh, the new form of online teaching. So that's, that's the, the overview. That was an awesome overview. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Especially you. open as the, 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 the default and not this, you know, yes. uh, added unit, if you will, or niche unit. So thank you so much for that, Judy. I'll just note, thank you, Judy. Um, I'm just going to note, uh, Ethan put group eight's comments in the chat, just in re reference of time. Um, so I'm going to jump to, and so if you can just like make it like, you know, four, five, six words in terms of grouping a couple of ideas together um, so we can be respectful of time. Um, we're going to go back up to Mo for group three. Do you know who your speaker was for group three? That was Mo's group. Yes, I'm sorry, we chose a speaker, right? If you want to go ahead and, and comment, um, Mo, by all means. This is, this is Sherry Edwards. I'm in Mo's group and I was in the speaker. I'm sorry, I had trouble getting to the mic. Um, <laughs> we talked about uh, various things that have already been mentioned, but one of the themes, or the theme of ours was um, on an international scope. Um, we talked about contributing to a global knowledge bank, which, um, you know, it, it's something that does characterize OER, but reimagining that part of it. And then also, um, we talked about how, you know, we already have where we are in our group, which a few of us are from Florida. We have at our respective institutions, um, a lot of international faculty and students and so um, we're building on the idea that we need to make sure their voices are heard. And that's reimagining like where you are from where you are. I think reimagining can be a little bit weighty and kind of make you feel obligated to, you know, 
have to handle the whole thing. But, um, you know, leading from where you are is an important point, I think. And so um, I think it falls under what someone earlier just said about local customization. Um, you know, I think that's a, a humble reimagining that can be done. Absolutely. That's great. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, and we've got, we've got three more. Um, so I understand if people need to drop off um, as we are at time, but I do want to recognize that we, we have it. So if you guys just skip a few quick you know, sentences for group six. Hi, Stephen Bell here for group six. Uh, everybody in our group contributed some great ideas. Uh, we, we looked at it as uh, a broad umbrella under the idea of innovation as reimagining how do we take new and different approaches to creating awareness about OER on our, in our institutions and beyond. And people referenced the recent Bayview report and that showed there's still a need. Uh, bringing new people into the community and expanding the base of advocates and leaders. I pointed out library and information science students where uh, very little is being shared in the curriculum about open education movement. Uh, as others have said, rethinking the roles of our faculty and our students and how do we bring them into the fold in new ways that we haven't before. As, and we've heard this before, trying to reimagine how we get beyond OER as being about economics and affordability and being about much more than that and getting that message out there and reimagining the research in the open education movement so that we get beyond uh, the, the more common efficacy studies and start looking at broader impacts of openness in higher education and beyond. That was excellent, Stephen. Thank you. You're welcome. Really, really great. Thank you. Thanks everyone in group six for great ideas. <laughs> All right, so we've got two more. Um, Jasmine's group, uh, group seven. Yeah, I think Brian had the recap there really quickly. I feel like we we pretty much touched on it though from other groups, but yeah, Brian. Yeah, um, so we, we talked a lot about um, sort of expanding who's involved in, in uh, both the conference and open education broadly speaking. So bringing in more global perspectives, uh, bringing in more participants into the creation of of open educational resources and the perspectives and voices that are um, represented and thinking about, um, you know, who, who is given authority uh, in the, the materials that are being created. And also sort of on the other end of that, trying to remove barriers. So whether that's gatekeepers or financial barriers or, um, you know, barriers to, to who is represented, that sort of thing. Wonderful. Thank you, Brian. And last but not least, um, a Kingshus group, uh, group nine. Yep, I had that. Um, we talked about uh, uh, a lot about the what we need for an, uh, an open for an online conference uh, support for chat and tech. Uh, at OER twenty was good. Chats are just as important as presentations. We talked about the virtues of pre-recorded or not, depending on how you want to re-interact with the group that you're not going to get face-to-face. -face. Um, getting rid of jargon. Uh, do students not get in as, as involved in OER because they have a lack of clarity on how they're involved in the process? Uh, so I'm thinking a lot of like the student pergs. And do we really have a definition of open education that we're reimagining? Um, are we using the five R's? What is, uh, is a silly useful paradigm, um, I think was Jeff's point. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Justin. And so um, I think we've gone to all groups. Um, any last thoughts that I did not hit on or get to anybody? Okay, so in just respect, I appreciate everybody staying. I realize everybody's kind of dropped off. Um, I'm going to turn it back over to Jasmine to, uh, to wrap this up.
All right, I am not going to hold you all for too much more longer because we are at five minutes past. So thank you everyone for attending this month's community call. This feedback was amazing. And as always, we are going to talk about this and see how we can incorporate it into the conference experience and beyond. Uh, please join us for our next community call next month, which is September 18th. Mark that in your calendars at the same time. And of course, do not forget to submit your proposal, <laughs> which is uh, the deadline is September 1st. Thank you all so, so much and have a great rest of your day. Take care. Thanks, everybody.